know you love it. <laughs> Some of the stuff I'm going to do on my show today is actually really, really dangerous. You can run away, but I was just going to say, just sit on over to the side for me. I can't let you sit right here. You can sit in the seat. Oh, that's fine. That's totally fine. That's right. That's Hello there, everybody. How are y'all doing today? Wonderful. Oh, awesome. Hey, welcome to the show. My name's Jeff. Everyone say hi, Jeff. Hi. Hi everyone, this show Amazing Air Naturally is going to be all about that amazing stuff I call air. But hey, you know, before I start talking about air, I was kind of curious. What do you all know about air? For example, I want you to do something for me. This is what I want you all to do. Can all of you use your fingers and point it out? Where do we find air? Show me. You're right. You are absolutely right. If you point one way or any way, you're right. Because the air is where? Everywhere. Everywhere. You guys got it? Can you see it? Then how do you know it's there? You breathe it. Ah, we breathe it. We need it, right? All of you should be doing this. <gasps> Tell you what, you know, there are other ways we know the air's around. Folks, let me show you my favorite way I know air's around. Check this thing out right over here. Over here, I've got this thing, this big red thing. And this thing right here is called a vortex generator. I want you all to look inside the Vortex Generator. Take a peek in there. Do you see anything in there? No. So what's inside of there? Air! Air! You got it, okay. Now, here's an important question for everyone. If I push in on this rubber-like drum here, what do you think will happen to the air on the inside? It might get pushed out, right? Remember, guys, you don't have to raise your hands here. This is a live science show, and it's meant to be fun. Raising hands is no fun. So don't raise your hands. Just tell me. What's going to happen to the air? It's probably going to get pushed out. Well, let's see. around but tell you what this is our problem we keep seem to be having did anyone see the air no. would you like to yes. check this out being a super nifty awesome science demonstrator that I am I figured out a way to show everyone the shape of the air now to show you the shape of the air I gotta bring out something kind of dangerous and I gotta warn all of you I have something in this canister called liquid nitrogen has anyone ever heard of liquid nitrogen? Oh yeah, quite a few of you, very cool. Hey, if you've never heard of liquid nitrogen before, don't worry, I'm gonna tell you all about it. First, let me tell you, this stuff is cold. This stuff's incredibly cold. Us humans, we consider 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius cold. What happens to that temperature? Water will freeze, right? Very good, well this stuff, Liquid nitrogen is negative 319 degrees Fahrenheit. That's negative 196 degrees Celsius. Is that cold? Yes. Just a little bit. Tell you what, it's over 300 degrees colder than ice if you're from America. That's close to 200 degrees colder than ice anywhere else in the world. It's really cold, and you'll notice that's why I'm wearing gloves and goggles. But here's the cruel thing about liquid nitrogen. Our air, the stuff you're breathing right now, 71% of it is made up of this stuff right here in gas form, gas nitrogen. So, can you all see this gas coming up off here? That's the majority of what we're breathing. And this is what I'm gonna use to show you the shape of our air. Tell you what. I know this stuff's really dangerous, but I'm going to do something really cool with it. I'm going to take two cups of liquid nitrogen, I'm going to dump it inside the vortex generator, then I'm going to shoot you with it. Yeah. Hold on, does that sound safe? Yeah. Uh, maybe not so much. Well, here, let me promise everyone something. The cloud, this gas we can see, the stuff the liquid nitrogen is making, 
is actually perfectly safe to touch with our hands, I assure you, absolutely. But folks, ladies and gentlemen, if you see something dripping out of the bottom of the cannon, would it be a good idea to run up and touch that stuff? No way. So please, it's very important you all stay where you are sitting. Is that understood? Yes. All right, with that being said, do you want to see what the air looks like? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Now, again, we never get to see the shape of the air, so I'm really curious as to what we're going to be seeing. So when I dump this stuff out, start straining your brain, start thinking about it. What shape is the air? Back this up a bit and check this out. What shape is the air, everybody? Circles, round, rings. Do they look like donuts to anybody else? Maybe I'm thinking with my stomach. And hey folks, here's the problem. I do not have enough donut rings to hit everyone with. That is why I'm shooting them above your head so everyone gets to see them. I'm sorry if you don't get to feel them. But let's see if I can make one more good one. You guys gotta tell me what shape is this. Here it is. Circles, right? One more time, tell me what shape was the air. Circles! Circles, round, rings. And you know, that's just how I like to think about the shape of the air. Even if that's not always necessarily correct, it really, really helps me visualize air, air being round. For example, maybe you've seen one of these before. What's this? A balloon, ah, very perceptive. If I put air inside of this thing, what shape is it going to be? Pretty round, right? Now, we could say that inside of this balloon, we have air pushing, okay? There's just so much air inside of this balloon, it creates something called pressure. It does not want to be inside of that balloon. So here's a very, very tough question, and I understand if you guys don't get this one right, but if I were to let go of the balloon here, where's all the air gonna push? You think it's gonna push out? Yeah. What's gonna happen to the balloon when that happens? You think it's gonna fly around? Yeah. Are you sure? Should we check it out? Yeah. You've tried it. Okay, well here, let's see what happens. Yeah, pretty much exactly what everyone was expecting, but here, you might not have realized it, but there's actually a really cool science concept behind that balloon trick. Here it is. Folks, if there's one thing I want you to learn today, this is what I want you to learn. That when air moves, it moves from high pressure to low pressure. Every time air moves, this is how it moves. There was a lot of pressure inside of that balloon, so it didn't want to be in there, that air left the balloon. But let me explain it in a little bit cooler of a way. Folks, let me introduce to you Bob the Balloon. Everyone say hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Now, Bob here happens to be my absolute and all favorite water balloon in the world, okay? He's really, really important to me. So what I do with my friend Bob is I put him inside his carrying case. This right here, this glass milk jug, you see? Now, folks, if I want to put Bob inside of this jar, what do you think I could do? How, how could I do it? Just squish him in there, right? Okay, here. So here, I'm going to squish Bob inside. Hold on, let's try that again. Does Bob want to go inside of that jar? Yeah. No, and if I push really hard on Bob the Balloon, what would happen to Bob? He would pop, he'd explode, and I get Bob juice all over me. I don't want that to happen. So instead, I figured out a way to make the air help me do this. However, folks, for this trick, I have to use a little bit of fire. So I have a question for all you kids out there in the audience. Now that you see the super awesome science guy playing with fire, it's a good idea to go home and play with fire too, right? No, absolutely not. Remember folks, I'm a trained professional. I do this all the time, I practice it all the time. I'm doing it up here to keep myself safe, but more importantly, to keep all of you safe. Now, here's the trick, here's how it works. This is a strip of cotton. A lot of your clothing is probably made out of this. I am simply using it to catch on fire. Check this out. I don't want to give away the trick, but I'm going to light this on fire. I'm going to heat up the air inside of the jar, and then all I have to do is put Bob on top. Did you see it? 
Did you see the suction? Yes. Did you see the suction? Yes. yes. No, you didn't. No, I'm sorry, that was me. That was a trick question. There was no suction involved. Let me explain. We had this hot air, okay? This hot air, it started to take up more space. It started moving around more. It had too much energy. So it left the jar. It didn't want to be in there. But then, I put Bob on top. That put the fire out inside and cooled off the air. So all of a sudden, this air on the outside wanted to go back in. So what did the air do to Bob? Pushed. Very good, everyone. He was not sucked in from underneath. Bob got pushed in. Good job. Bob. Well, I seem to have a new problem, don't I? First I wanted him in there, now I want him back out. Folks, I used hot air to get Bob in there. How do you think I could get him out? Oh, yeah. ah, cold air. Do I have something cold on this stage I could use? What was that called again? The liquid nitrogen, right? This stuff's cold, it'll cool down the air. So here's the trick. I'm gonna take just a little bit more liquid nitrogen. Just a splash. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it right next to Bob. And oh, by the way, I'm really not pulling your legs. Bob's stuck, okay? But if I use just a splash of liquid nitrogen, he <laughs> pops right back out. And you know, some of you are probably asking yourselves, well, what's so cool about Bob? He seems just like an ordinary water balloon to me. Cool thing about Bob, he's got a trick of his own, you see. If I try to put Bob inside of this jar using nothing but the liquid nitrogen, nothing but cold air, Bob will do a trick of his own. He dances. <laughs> Look at him go. Why is he dancing? It's because of this stuff. This liquid nitrogen. Right now as we speak, it's boiling, okay? It's changing from a liquid into a gas. This one cup, when it boils, will expand 700 times. So if I put just a small amount of that liquid in there, it'll turn into a lot of gas. That creates a lot of pressure. And so what happened to Bob? He got pushed out. And this is why we can see the gas escaping around him as he does his little Bob dance. Good job, Bob. Can we get a round of applause for Bob? Excellent job, Bob. Way to keep it dancing. Loving it. All right, folks. So this show primarily is about different ways air can push. Now, I showed you air pushing in, and I showed you air pushing out. I got two really other, or two really cool ways air can push. Two other really cool ways, and uh, one of them happens to be how air pushes down. Now, important question: There is air pushing down on all of us right now. Can anyone feel the air push down on them? Oh, quite a few of you, very cool. Hey, those of you who can feel the air pushing on them, does it feel like there's 14.7 pounds of air pushing on you? Or does that seem crazy? Crazy, right? Well, tell you what, it's there. There is 14.7 pounds of air pushing, pushing on you, and I can prove it by using this. What's this? board, a wood, a plank, sure, call it you will. And uh, what's this? A hammer, a mallet, yeah, call it what you want. Either way, this is how the trick works. I'm gonna take this here hammer, and I'm gonna smack the stick like that. When I smack the stick, what's gonna happen? It's gonna fly through the air, right? Okay, you know what else could happen? Could hit me in the face. Safety first, folks. All right, watch this stick very closely. Everyone, keep your eyes peeled on this stick. This is a really cool trick, and I don't think what you expect is going to happen. It's going to happen. Watch this. Is that exciting? No? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. That wasn't that exciting. Let me make it a little bit more interesting then. That wasn't the most exciting thing. I'm sorry. But I can make it a little bit more interesting. Let's say if I put something over the stick, like what if I took something really, really, really heavy? In fact, one of the heaviest things on our planet. I'll tell you what, folks, you want to see something super heavy? I'm going to put it on top of the stick. Check this out. It's really heavy. I don't even know if I can lift it anymore. It's only paper. 
This stuff's really heavy, right, everyone? No, that's silly. But, regardless, if I put this piece of paper down over that stick, and I do it again, I take this hammer and I whack that stick, what's going to happen to the stick? What's going to happen to the paper? Okay, okay, so I heard a couple of different things. I heard they're both going to go flying, right? And what's going to happen to the paper if it goes flying? It'll float down, okay? And what do you think? Will the stick travel as far this time? No. No, probably not. Okay, all right. Well, again, I want you to watch close. Keep your eyes on that paper. Keep your eyes on that stick. And check this out. Okay, that was weird. Did anything happen? No, not really. Now, I heard someone say, oh, he didn't hit it hard enough, and that might be true. But let's check two other things first. For example, did I glue the paper down? No. Did I glue the stick down? Okay, so obviously, all I need to do is hit it harder, right? Should I try hitting it harder? Yeah! Yeah, sure, of course, all right, here. I'm gonna use two hands, and I'm gonna hit this stick as hard as I possibly can. Watch this. What happened? Did a piece of paper break a stick? No. Oh, I hit it too hard. But wait, if the paper was there, if I hit the stick harder, what would happen to the stick? It would have went flying further, right? But I put the paper down and all of a sudden, magically, it broke. So was it the paper? Was it the hammer? Well, the hammer helped, but there's something else at work here. There's something we can't see. There's something we need. It's pretty amazing. What is it? Air. Air, that's right. I told you, on every inch of your body, there's 14.7 pounds. We can't feel it because our body pushes right back out against it, and we're good at it. We have been doing it since birth. However, folks, this right here, this is like a sailboat. This is like a sail or a parachute. This is 20 by 27 inches. It actually catches hold of our air, holds the piece of paper down. And what did it do to the stick? Broke it. So is air pushing down on us? We might not be able to feel it, but I think we proved it. I love that trick. I find it very fascinating. And I always get great eyeballs. People are just like, sorry. OK. I showed you air pushing in. Showed you air pushing out. Showed you air pushing down. What do we got left? Ah, very good. However, there's a problem with air pushing up. In order to explain that to you really well, I have to talk to you about a smart scientist. A scientist by the name of Bernoulli. Has anyone ever heard of the scientist Bernoulli before? A few of you know. Okay, don't worry about it. Tell you what, he discovered a lot. I'm not going to get into everything he said, but he figured out one really cool thing about fluids and the air in general. To show you, I got this. What's this? A bag. Not only is this a bag, folks, this is a really big bag, all right? Now me, I'm over six feet tall. This bag is taller than me. That's a pretty big bag. Now, one thing I'll point out, this end of the bag is completely tied off, and this end of the bag has a nice big opening. Here's the trick. Here's how it works. I'm going to fill this bag with air. However, I can only use one breath from my lungs to fill up the whole bag. Do you think I can do that? Yeah. Do you think it's possible? Yeah. yeah? Most of you? No? Yeah. Someone said no? I'll tell you what. If you don't believe me, I promise you, I can fill this whole bag with just one breath. All right, you ready for this? Okay. Check this. Thank you. Check this out. <gasps> Did I do it? No. Did I even get close? <laughs> How many more breaths would it take for me to fill it up if I kept trying to do it this way? Four. Three, four, six, a hundred. Yeah, something yeah. like that. But I promised you I'd do it, right? I'm going to keep that promise. But you, sir, could you hold on to that end of the bag for me? Don't let go. Don't let go. Good. All right. Good. Check this out. This is what Bernoulli figured out. 
First, I'm going to make a small pocket of air. Y'all see that small pocket of air? Bernoulli said that when air travels fast, it's low pressure air. Is that a full bag of air? Was that one breath from my lungs? Did I cheat? No, okay, just making sure. Can I have the bag back? Thank you. Check this out. Just like last time, only about that much of the air was from my lungs. Everything else was the air standing still in front of my face. If you've ever tried to blow a candle out on the other side of the room, this is how it works. When we breathe air forward, it pushes more air forward, too. That being said, let me show you air pushing up. And folks, this one's a lot of fun. I particularly like this trick because this is one of my most visually beautiful tricks that we've got. It involves this cage here. Now, inside of this cage there is air, but we can't see the air. So if, even if I move this cage around, we cannot see the air. So in order to show you the air, I'm actually going to be using fire as a representative once more. However, I forgot my paper towel fuel source. Not too hard to fix. Yeah, yeah, I'm just using a paper towel, okay? And this piece of paper, I'm wadding up into a ball, and again, it's just gonna be my fuel source. Now, to make it burn a little brighter and a little bit better, I'm also gonna be using a little bit of lighter fluid. Now, should kids be playing with lighter fluid? No. No, remember, again, I'm a trained professional, and I'm doing everything that I can to keep all of you safe, and myself included. But that doesn't mean we can't have a little bit of fun with it. So, now that I've put some lighter fluid on this piece of paper, I'm going to stick it into the middle of the column here. I'm going to light it on fire. And again, we're looking for the air to push in a certain way. Which way? Very good. We're looking for the air to push up. But because the air is going to be moving, we're going to be able to see something else too. This is a very, very beautiful trick once again. So I want you all to keep your eyes right here in the middle. Watch that paper. More importantly, watch the fire. Tell me what you see. Check this out. What does it look like? Like a vortex. Like it's spinning. Maybe like a tornado? Or a fire-nado? Yeah. I see a fire nato too. Very cool. Do you guys like that? Was that pretty cool? Yeah, yeah, awesome, sweet. I love that trick, that's a great trick. And you know, a lot of people might be thinking about centrifugal force, which is when something spins, it gets pushed to the outside. In this case, we had air getting sucked into the middle there. That was causing the fire to get pushed in onto itself. Because it was spinning, it was sucking even more air in. Fire couldn't go any other way, so which way did it start to climb? Up, oh, right? This has been a fun show. Have you guys been having fun today? Yeah, yeah? yeah? Alright, okay. Tell you what, if you've been having fun, I'm gonna do one more thing for you. Do you wanna see another fire tornado? Yeah. Do you wanna see a bigger fire tornado? Yeah. Good answer. So this time, I'm gonna use twice as much fuel. That means twice as much paper. Hold on a second. I'm not done yet. Twice as much paper, yes. But that also means twice as much lighter fluid. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This part actually takes a while. So I was thinking, if you all truly had fun today, which I I hope you've been having fun. I'm I'm right, right? You've been having fun? Okay. Alright, well then, in that case. Let me do one more thing for all of you. You guys have been great. So, uh, I could just light this on fire and make a bigger fire tornado, or I could let you see it in all of its splendor and glory. So, I'll turn off the lights. There we go. Now, let me put this thing in here and we'll get underway. Folks, I have but one final request of all of you. Just one more thing. This is the very last trick in the Amazing Air show. So, if I can get the fire to shoot out of the cage, do y'all think you can give me a huge round of applause? Could you? You think you could? 
Good answer. All right. Well then, without any further ado, folks, here's a giant fire tornado.